It's Tuesday, August 12th, and welcome to your source of comic book news and culture. Everyone is back from vacation and on location shooting. So sit back and prepare yourself for the quick dose of comic knowledge that you'll need before stepping into your comic shop on Wednesday. Up first, though, is the rundown with what you can expect in finding shops this week. After, I'll be back with our pick of the week. Our pick of the week is the return of one of the best new series to hit comic shops in quite some time. Atomic Robo Dogs of War sees the coolest action scientist back in the swing of things. This time we see Robo back in World War II having to deal with some Nazi super mechs. Yes, Nazi super mechs. And the crazy thing is, once you get over an atomic powered robot, everything that he goes up against doesn't seem all that unbelievable. Hell, half the time Robo doesn't even know what he's taking on. Robo lives in a world where pretty much all those really bad 1950s flicks happened. And it's thanks to creators Brian Clevenger and Scott Wegner that Robo's world doesn't seem so hokey or cliche. It's just a damn cool place that I'd like to visit sometime. Hi, I'm Nick, and here are your headlines for Tuesday, August 12th, 2008. We're going to keep the news really short this week. A, because after the San Diego Comic-Con, things quiet down a bit. And B, we have a new segment that we want to throw in this week. Okay, on to the news. Much like it has done for the last few weeks, The Dark Knight is continuing to dominate the box office. This past week saw The Dark Knight's fourth week in release, and also its fourth as the number one movie, this time grossing $26 million. The grand total so far? $441.6 million, and that's just for the US. Add in the rest of the world, and we're looking at over $705 million. So that's four weeks in release at number one, the third biggest movie in history behind Titanic and Star Wars. And in a week or so, we'll be telling you that it's the second biggest release after Titanic. And surprisingly, still no word of a sequel. So of course, there are other comic book movies in production or set for release. Greg Rucka's Whiteout with Kate Beckinsale looks to be set for release on April 24th, 2009, a bit later than the September release it was first rumored to have. We 3 has been optioned, and creator Grant Morrison says the director is attached, just not who yet. And there's talk that the on-again, off-again Justice League movie is on again. But we'll wait for more concrete info on that one. We mentioned some Eisner Award winners the other week, but we didn't mention them all. Dark Horse Presents won the Best Digital Comic Award for Sugar Shock. We're not sure if it was because it's a Joss Whedon comic, but consider comics on MySpace to have just gotten a little more legitimate. Dark Horse isn't the only publisher putting out comics online, but they are one of the few to do it for free. And finally, in some sad news, Archie Comics Publications Chairman Michael Silberclate died last week at the age of 76. Not every comic fan would know his name, but it's impossible to argue with the impact that he has had on the field of comics. He worked at Archie for 60 years, and in that time, Archie and the Riverdale gang have become a part of popular culture. To put things in perspective, Archie has a few interesting statistics. It's sold at just about every supermarket, it's consistently listed as many people's intro to comics, and adults tend to come back to Archie when they get older. Silver Clay was not just responsible for maintaining the Archie brand, but he also helped add to it, including ushering in Josie and the Pussycats and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. The world of comics is just a little less richer with his loss. Okay, we'll be back next week with more news, but up next, it's some first looks at comics sent to ship this week. So, uh, me and Lewis are here on camera, which means one of two things. 
Um, we are going to do a silent interpretation of a silent movie from the 50s. Could be that, or we could be doing first looks, which is what we're actually doing. And I'm going to start it off with Astonishing X-Men. And this is one of those times where I was like, I really wish I paid attention to what you said about the last Astonishing X-Men. Yeah. Because there's this dude who's got this cube, and he's going to power it up, and things are going to happen. And he burns himself alive, and Cyclops is there, and says, take the shot, and Storm's like, I hope I didn't kill him. Comic's weird, man. Wow. Comic is weird. A lot of stuff happened. I'm not quite sure what it means. Well, you know, Warren Ellis is writing the book now, so there's going to be plenty of, you know... Absolutely. I mean, that's just the way it's going to go. Yeah. How's the art in that book? I took a couple of flips through. It looks kind of... It looks good, but it doesn't... Like Storm's new look, she looks like... I don't know why Egyptian they gave her, like, queen. power gauntlet-type leg yeah. hair. I didn't get that. But anyway, fi um, Final Fantasy. Fantastic Four! Yes, uh, what is it, 559 we're on. This is the uh, new story arc, The Death of the Invisible Woman, which don't take this story literally for what the title is, or you might want to at the end of the arc. Who knows what happens. Um, Von Doom has been kidnapped by the new Defenders, who are led by Hulk. What? So you're asking yourself what's going on. you got to read the book. It's Mark Miller writing it. There's all kinds of stuff happening right here. Um, Johnny's being kidnapped. Uh, meanwhile, they're still feeling the ramifications from the last story arc, from when the New World's being built. Apparently, it wasn't being built for everybody on Earth. It's only being built for the elite people of Earth. So it's kind of So we're like, going. So, yeah. You guys are kind of screwed. But me Sorry. and Lewis will be on the second Earth. We'll send and you a postcard. Uh, I'm going to kill uh, Susan Storm. There you That's go. It's a plot twist. Next arc. But, we'll uh, see it. Read that book. It's getting interesting. A lot of stuff going on in the Fantastic Four universe, but uh, we're going to have to see what happens there. And, of course, next you read Amazing Spider-Man, which and is funny because I didn't read it. Yeah, this is uh, part three of the uh, the new Craven hunt storyline, A New Hunt, or the first hunt, it's being called. So um, Craven's back again? No, no. Despite what happened in the or Punisher War... Or are they hunting War for Craven? Despite what happened in the Punisher War Journal comic where Craven's son had a, made a random appearance and he's like, oh, I'm taking over where my dad left off and I look crazier and I'm more jacked up. Now Craven has a daughter who's picking up where he left off and a crazy wife who apparently is still alive somehow and just kind of encouraging the kids to go out there so and So it's and the kill Craven people. family hunt time? There you go. It's it's Craven family hunt time. Which Coming is like, soon on PBS. That makes it like a good bumper sticker. So um, someone grabbed Spidey's outfit, so she's hunting the wrong person. So Spidey grabs one of Daredevil's outfits and he's running around as Daredevil. So this is actually a lot of fun to read because it's just like... This is just pandemonium. There's just people dying and, and people hunting and family, and it's just great. Pure chaos. Love it. Yeah. All right. Well, um, this is usually what we would say, like, buy this, burn this, whatever. But, yeah. you know, it's what we're going to do is we shot a uh, little bit last week. Yes, two we weeks shot ago. A, new, a new bit last week called... Uh, we're not going to talk about it. We're not gonna, the intro is self-explanatory. Yeah. You can stay tuned and watch that later in the show. Yes, it's very good. So me and Lewis are back, but believe it or not, we're not doing previews. No. This is a new thing that we're doing that we just thought would be mildly amusing. I'm calling this segment, Judging a Book by Its Cover. Are we not supposed to do that? We're thing? not supposed to do that. We're supposed to read the book, tell you what the book's about, and if it's good or not. But we're not doing that in this segment. No. We are going to look at the cover of a book off the wall that came out that week, and we're going to guess what it's about. Okay. I, Our I, best guess. I can deal with that. Yeah. So, so you took. So the first one we're looking at is Virgin Comics, The Leaves. The leaves. What do you think it's about? I obviously, it's obvious to think that this guy is running away from New York because the fall season is approaching, and people like me are afraid of yellow leaves. So once we start seeing yellow leaves, we run away because yellow means fear. Fear like the Sinestro Corps. Fear like. Sinestro. So, so Virgin like, Comics is stealing DC's idea. Yeah, exactly. That's a huge copyright infringement, so they're going to get a big lawsuit soon. But, but okay. other than that... See, just... I, you know what I think this book is about? Because it's, it's got this weird text here. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll get to this later. But this right here, this is weird text. This is actually a spell. This is about uh, magic. And this guy is actually an evil wizard who's running out of Central Park in New York City because he has turned all the leaves that are falling from the trees during fall into razor blades. Mm, Try that, to walk through that. That actually. Try to walk through that. that you can't. More sense You'll cut your ankles apart. Yeah. That's, no one. You got to crawl your way out of Central Park and you'd be cut to ribbons. That's. That's, that's what that's, the leaves is about. Great book. Brutal. Great book. Brutal. And now we have the ambush bug. Year none from DC. Um. You sure it's not year one? Year none. Year none. Oh. Year none. Uh, it's got. He, he's cursing and he's very upset because he just messed up on Jeopardy. That's what I'm going with. Ambush Bug is a green character who goes on Jeopardy and loses $50 million. And you obviously see the category is DC, which anybody could fuck up on because that's just a bad thing to go into. So you got to feel bad for the guy. Any ideas? 
Um, I'm going to say that he looks like somebody that Grant Morrison would make up. So this is obviously a Grant Morrison book, even though it's written by Keith Giffen. Grant Morrison gave him the idea because he felt bad. And he just had all these ideas just pouring out of his ass because, you know, he's a, he's a genius. I'll give you that. So this book is obviously going to tie into the Batman R.I.P. storyline. This man will become Batman by the end of the story. Well, that makes this the book to pick up. But also, while we're Gotta here, why it. not? Gotta I'm going to pull off uh, Broken Trinity. Oh, Ooh, there's two covers. Ooh, there two covers, two covers. All right, so Broken Trinity from Top Cow, two covers. Uh, Half-naked chicks in Witchblade uniform type stuff. One yes. is wearing jeans. Yeah. So I think Witchblade, all right, is actually going to start a modeling career for Guess. And she's going to abandon crime fighting. That Yeah, okay, yeah. What do you got? Well, I got, she's going to start the Guess line of her own jeans, kind of like Apple bottom jeans. They'll be Witchblade bottom jeans. Okay. She will be the next porn star, the ne America's Next Great Porn Star, which is what the whole outfit calls for. Uh, that was a little easy. Okay, but now this one, this one of the same book. So this book is about a model, mm -hmm. a porn star, and... They're pimp. Pimps. Yeah. These are magic super pimps. Yeah. And they have the, you know, bitch be good canes and that are actually more like swords of clearness. And they can fly, possibly. Um, but yeah, so that is judging a book by its cover. I hope you don't pick up Broken Trinity because no. that's the least appealing on it. But the yeah. leaves. The leaves. Wow. Is, that is the book to own. Big razors. Everywhere. If that's what it's about, that's that pick it up. I, I might read it now. Alright, that's it for this week's Variant Edition Tuesday. We're back on schedule and we should have the interview episode out before the weekend. Keyword is should, but the big news is that this weekend we'll, we will be attending the Mid-Jersey Comic Con. This Saturday, August 16th, is the Mid-Jersey Comic Con, probably our favorite con of the year. That's right, it may not be as big as the New York Comic Con, or Wizard World for that matter, but there's something about those small cons where you can actually get to talk to the guests. And besides, as my girlfriend says, size doesn't matter. Plus, the Mid Jersey Comic Con was our very first con, and Laverne and Rich really do know how to put on a, con a convention. Well, for the rest of us, size matters a lot. So, if you live in the New Jersey area, check out MidJerseyComicCon.com for all the details about the show. Swip. So that is where we can find. Uh, so that's where you can find us this weekend. How about the rest of the time? Well, VarianEdition.com. Kevin, no more lame segues, all right? promise nothing. Yeah, whatever. So, we have links to all the ways you can watch us or download us, including iTunes, YouTube, VO, or high-res feed from Blip TV, or the broadcast quality BitTorrent, I still don't really know what that means, powered version from Views. And as usual, Classic Comics in Rowan, New Jersey is still your friendly neighborhood comic shop. That's right. We shot this episode and pretty much every freaking episode of this show at that comic shop. Want to know how you can save up to 20% of your comics like we do? Check out ClassicComics.com for more information about the shop. Yep. That's all you need to know, kids. That's it for this week. Yeah, how about that ambush bug becoming Batman, eh? Ridiculous! Absolutely bug to bat? Insane. What? And leaves that are razor blades. See it all in those books. I liked it. That was good. It's a good ending. It's a good ending. Oh, no, 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 no,